Hey everybody, I am, uh, I don't even know what I'm doing today, but, um, I'm talking about black privilege. I read this article, I was, uh, scrolling, and I don't know if some of you have it, like, on your computer, it'll give you breaking news, different little things, and so I clicked on it, and it goes to MSN News and all this other stuff, and there was this article on black privilege, and I was like, what? So, I, I, I said, I read it. I immediately got upset. Like I read, this was a couple of weeks ago. Like it was a little while ago to to where I just couldn't even think about it. I was like, you know what? And I kept saying I was going to do a do a podcast or something on it. And I kept saying, no, I'm not going to do it. No, I'm not going to do it. And then time just kept happening, and, and and it still irritated me. So I figured I'd share it with you. So I'm going to share the article with you. I'm going to give you some thoughts and some stuff I might not even comment on. I might just laugh and just be like, this is ridiculous. So, um, oh, first I am, I'm Adrian Charleston, AKA, uh, Butterfly Flow, AKA Butterfly, AKA your friendly neighborhood psychologist, all that other stuff. Not talking about psychology today. We're going to talk about this article that I read. So. The first thing, so let me share my screen. It took me a while to figure out how to do all this, so that was another reason why I didn't do it right away. So I don't even like the picture. The picture. And it says 15 examples of black privilege in America. 15. 15 examples of black privilege. In, I mean, just, and and why is the photo, why is this the photo? Why is this? of a black woman looking mad. Like that was the first thing that caught my eye. And then I was immediately irritated and just didn't understand what was going on. So um, before I get into it, this says it's by Julie Smith. Um, it says August 5th. So I don't know if that's when it was really done. I don't know. So when I found it on MSN, what I did was I copied the link. I said I had to go back and look at it and process it because this makes no sense. I read it, but then I was like, no, this is not real. And so I went back to it. Uh, no, I saved the link. Went to the link. Gone. They deleted it. I said, hmm, well, maybe it wasn't meant for me to talk about it. So I was like, let me just Google it. And then I found it on another site, um, but I couldn't just cut and paste. So I had to do screenshots. So these are screenshots from the site of the article written by Julie Smith, if that is a real person, if that is the real name, if this is what really happened. So 15 examples of black, black privilege. And um, I'm going to read the last part of the article first. So I had put it in order so I could share. And I'm wearing glasses today, so I can actually read. So the this is at the end of the article, not the beginning. So at the end of the end of the article, it said many would argue that black privilege is not a privilege. It is an equal, it is an equal equaling. <laughs> I was like, what? And and I, I, I can see but can't see from this far. Um, there's an equaling out of systemic bias and prejudice against one race. They cycle the cycle of poverty is sometimes hard to break without interference. Groups can be caught up in it. That was at the end of the article, not the beginning. It didn't even parcel out stuff. It, I was still irritated because then you tried to play it off like, oh, yeah, I wrote this article for no reason. But, okay. So, and, and I read that and I was like, okay, maybe I shouldn't say anything because they did recognize that people will say that this there is no privilege. But I just need y'all to see what they said were privileges. Um, so, apparently, I'm at the lean in. So, I'm sorry. I got to lean in to read because can't see this far uh, most people know most people this is at the beginning of the article most people know what white privilege is and speak openly about it there are some privileges that African Americans enjoy however that are not as commonly known or talked about most are born from an attempt to help people who have not been given the same opportunities systemically that's at the beginning of the article but it's a privilege but it's really what we had to do, like, make up your mind. Is it a privilege or is it something we had to do? And again, when we get into it, you're going to be like, what? So the first one was scholarships. I, I did. I missed the title. I didn't get it in there. But the first one was scholarships. And yeah, 
So when it came to scholarships, the article read, it would it wouldn't be politically correct to have a scholarship that was a lot allocated specifically just to Caucasian people. There are, however, many scholarships that are only available to minorities. Although they although they might not be specifically labeled as so, many of them are put aside for cultural and genetic ties to being African American. They are meant to serve an uncertain they are meant to serve undeserved communities and help break barriers to educational access. So first of all, that first sentence is a lie. HBCUs allow and give scholarships to Caucasian people and people that aren't black because they're HBCUs. Just like, uh, what do you call them, WP, WPIs? Yeah. White public institute, whatever. You know, I, didn't, I went to HBCUs. I don't know. But those other colleges, they give <laughs> they they give uh, scholarships to to people of other cultural relevance and all this other stuff. But then they said even if it doesn't say specifically African American, it'll say under undeserved communities, underserved communities. So they're just trying to say that, you know, because we don't have the the access and all the other stuff is why black people get the scholarships. But underserved communities can be any any anybody. Okay. Uh <laughs> this is just the first one, y'all. This is just the first one. This is supposed supposed to be a privilege of ours. And as we're seeing, because they're taking away a lot of this stuff now. They're taking it away, and they're realizing that it wasn't just a privilege for black folk. It wasn't a privilege, period. But they're understanding now that it wasn't just for black folks as they start taking it away. So, but yeah, black people are privileged. Privilege. Another privilege that this article said is, is media and art spotlight. It's a privilege to have media and art spotlight. Okay, so it says. There has been a real push over the past several decades to celebrate African American art and media. Black America has been traditionally left out of the media and the art unappreciated. Many black people throughout history had the luxury of being critically acclaimed artists or the means. What they did do, however, was a creative and artistic paradigm all their own. They are finally getting the form that they haven't been able to in the past. So how is that a privilege? Like, this article literally contradicts itself as it's going. How is media and art spotlight a privilege when, historically speaking, a lot of the art, a lot of the voice, a lot of things have been stolen from African Americans and portrayed as, you know, in, in, in the world as somebody else did it or it belonged to somebody else and we were taken out of it. So how now is it a privilege for our art and media to be spotlighted when yeah. I'm I'm just asking the questions and reading these articles because it makes no sense. The next one is community togetherness. It's a privilege. That's, I, and I keep saying this because I need you to understand that they wrote this and said that these are privileges of black people. Not many, not many Caucasian people are that committed to community or banded with their neighbors to keep safe. African Americans often share a common cause to allow their families and children to grow up in a different existence. Therefore, solidarity and community are fostered and celebrated in black communities around the country. They tend to group together to fight injustices as a group, and it is much more acceptable to self-segregate. But it's a privilege. Like, they literally named this five privileges, <laughs> 15, 15 privileges that black people have. And then they name them, and then it's explained, and it's still not a privilege. What do you mean community togetherness? We have to band together to make sure we are we we get what we yeah. And and, and I'm speechless at points just because 
it doesn't make sense because it literally said we black people band, band together due to injustices we self-segregate so we can take care of each other so how is that a privilege when it sounds as if it's done out of a necessity to ensure that we're taken care of and not mistreated okay cultural norms that stand out i forgot what this one said but i'm i'm reading of course cultural norms that stand out y'all y'all not even going when i get further into this y'all gonna be like what so cultural norms that stand out black americans had not a privilege black americans had to abandon a lot of their cultural a lot of their culture when they came to america therefore they are continually bringing a bit of unique culture to their lives pop culture is important to African Americans to make them stand out. It helps them to differentiate from the average American. Everything from music to fashion has a segment that is all theirs. What? I, I, and, and I'm going to go back to the title of this because I forgot the title. Cultural norms that stand out. That's a privilege. In, instead, of, instead of us actually just being people, individuals, groups that want to stand out and again it's stolen again like once we do it it's stolen so how is it a privilege that we created these things that we created things that are still stolen once we do it so how and i don't know why i keep forgetting this word but because it makes no cultural norms i don't understand yeah so how is it a cultural norm that stands out just because we're unique? We create things? We are ourselves? Like, oh, okay. Okay. I don't understand, but yeah. Okay. So next is <laughs> underlying undertone, resilience, and strength supposed to be a privilege it is undeniable that the african-american community has gone through immeasurable challenges as the race that doesn't mean however that every person with african-american heritage has had the same hurdles and worked through them not all the not all black americans are the scorn of racism systemic or otherwise there is however an underlying undertone of strength and resilience that follows the individual and the race so the battles that we had to face being black, growing up, you know, the extra mile we have to go to do everything has fostered resilience and strength in the black community and black people as a whole and as individuals, as it said. But how is that a privilege? How is it a privilege to be historically mistreated, not included? told you're dumb, stupid, and ugly, then have your ideas taken, stolen, your image literally replicated, and people are still trying to look like us. That's, it's, that we became resilient and we keep going. Like, what do you want us to do? What are we supposed to do? Like resiliency is a thing in psychology that is being studied and how some people are resilient and how some aren't and what they go through and all this stuff. So it's not a privilege. It's something that people are, have been forced to do. Like it's either that or lay down and be done. Like how is, how is being mistreated and overcoming it a privilege? I'm just, I'm just going. I'm just okay. I went in on that one and I don't even social and political activism as a privilege. I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read it. The African American community has done a lot of political reform and change in the United States. The Black Lives Matter to from the back Black Lives Matter to other movements to better the lives of black American communities. Their influence is vast. Not all the politically driven Initiatives that appear to support African American causes are on the up and up or upfront about what their agendas are. All 
<laughs> All a group has to say, however, is that they stand with the African and American community. Once proclaimed, saying anything against the group is tantamount to being against Black American causes. It's not true. A lot of people say that they, they literally got rid of DAI because they thought it was for Black people. So what are you saying? What are you saying? Like, what? So because we can come together and, 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 let, and ask people to stop killing us, that's a privilege. That's a privilege to be pointed out, to be racially profiled, to be, I did a study on racial profiling when I was in college, in the military, I was in the military and college at the same time, and I was studying criminal justice. I was doing studies on racial profiling back in the 90s and nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Well, except for now, they're openly killing us instead of, you know, just pulling us over and beating us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, it's a big change. Like, nothing has changed. It's gotten worse since the 90s when I did a paper on it. So how is it that us coming together for change, for political change, is a privilege? I'm still not understanding how any of these are a privilege. I'm going to keep going, though, because there's 15 of them. I don't even know what number I'm on. Religious and spiritual reach. I'm going to read this one. I don't know. African-American communities have a very strong spiritual and religious reach. When spiritual or religious leaders proclaim that they represent black Americans, they can guide the narrative. <laughs> they <laughs> are pushed. Wait. Guide the narratives are pushed the, and push the agenda, regardless of the intentions behind an organization. If they identify themselves as being part of the African-American cause, they get the righteous card. That is not true. So basically, not only, like you're saying it's a privilege that any religious person can say, oh, I'm with the black community and we're stupid enough to be like, oh yeah, you're right. No, we're not stupid either. Like this makes it sound as if we blindly follow people because of religious beliefs and because they say they are here for the black community. What? That's what, again, this is the article. 15 privileges of black folks. I, I'm not understanding. I'm not understanding. Um, I don't know the title of this one, but I'm thinking it was, I'll just read it and then, because I think I missed the title somewhere, so I'm just going to read it. When a minority is oppressed, they necessarily have to bond together to preserve. The African-American community has become good at lifting one another up and forming ties and networks for the advancement of other Black Americans. There are a vast number of African-American-led mentorship and resources that younger people can get involved in and get ahead. So you're saying mentorship is a privilege because we don't have any other way because in, in the words of Julie over here, says we've been oppressed, so we had to come together to help other people of our race to move up because we've been oppressed, and that's a privilege. Now, that, that that's, that's, that's a privilege. You know, I, and I don't know, like, I keep saying, you know, I don't know who Julie Smith is. I don't even know if that's the real person who wrote the article because, like I said, it got away from me so fast. And when I tried to, like, they could have put any name on here. They could have made up a name. Could have been, you know, something made up. So that's another one. Just have, being able to do have mentorship. To have pe What? What? You know, I'm going to keep going because this is getting long. Spotlight and dedication is a privilege for black folks. African Americans necessarily had to assimilate to American culture and inherit its past. There are still many historically significant things that should be celebrated. Things like Black History Month or special African American tied religious organization holidays are adhered to and celebrated around the United States in honor of Black culture and history. So basically, you don't want us to have a Black History Month. We can't. We can't celebrate it. Even though you've been celebrating Columbus Day, even though 
during Black History Month, you have so many other things going on that it is, I mean, we celebrate 365, so I'm just saying for the other folks, like, it's difficult to get it in because you have something every day, every day, every day of February, you have something else going on. And because now, you know, Juneteenth is celebrated widely, apparently that's an issue because we have holidays. Like, we're not even talking about Columbus Day, which we had to change the name because what did Columbus discover? Anyway, President's Day, Memorial Day, Labor Day, like every holiday is already set aside for, for you know, for everybody. But you want to talk about, and, and it's really not for everybody because if you look at the history of a lot of these holidays, 4th of July, all of them are in, you know, have a lot of racism behind it but we're not going to get into that because that's not what they want to talk about they want to talk about why we have holidays how long did it take how long did it take to get a holiday how long did it take to get email tax you know a grander purpose it's a privilege for us to have a grander purpose y'all listen many historical figures that are celebrated in the african-american community were trailblazers that changed the face of american society as a whole their inspiration to create real and lasting change has been imprinted on the community. That vision has overcome current circumstances and make change in the world has given many African American, many African American young people a sense that they have a grander purpose than to just live their life to the fullest. Many feel a duty to be more than the average person and view themselves in such a light. So because African Americans see that there is more to do, there's more to be, there's more to overcome, and wants to help wants to help the community move up. That's a privilege. That's what this is saying. It's a privilege that we want to do better. It's a privilege that we want to look after more than just ourselves. As we say we have a bigger purpose in life. It's a privilege to want to do more to be more okay all right i'm gonna go to the next one because role modeling because uh, apparently i missed this not many african american young people grow up seeing people like themselves in high positions or roles that are modeled after in the mainstream many of the people who they do look up to more because they are in the public eye and representing race than any true role modeling that they do for character or high ground for instance black sports players become role models for their celebrity regardless of what they do in the their personal lives it is the outward appearance of success that is emulated not the road to getting where they are so that was literally just all backhanded like we have role models that's supposed to be a privilege but then you just chat on the role models saying regardless of what they do like you're saying they're technically not not a role model because of what they do in their personal lives and how is that how is that a privilege how is it a privilege that we don't see enough people that look like us in higher roles and so we have to grab on to whatever we can where we see people like us how is that a pri you know what because this ties into the next one, which is athleticism, which is racist within itself to say athleticism is a privilege. What? Oh. Okay. African Americans dominate most of the professional and amateur sports arenas. Therefore, it is sometimes assumed that all black people possess a certain level of athleticism and competitiveness. In some ways, that negates all that they have to give and pigeonholes them into a particular track or purpose early on so you literally said it's not true so how's athleticism a privilege if i don't have it how is com being competitive a privilege if i don't have it just because it's perceived that i have it so basically that is a prejudgment which is a prejudice because you think I have athleticism because I'm black, or that all black people are athletic. The 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 best comeback I had. So my son's not he's not real tall. He's like 
five, ten, five, eleven. You know, he was in high school. We went to go visit when I was married. We went to visit my ex-husband's family, some family we hadn't met. And my son was still in high school. And um, one of the family members was like, hey, man, what sports you play? My son looked at him and was like, I read books. <laughs> because it's a stereotype <laughs> that all black men and black boys, black women, everybody is athletic. And my son literally looked at him and said, I read books. Because athleticism is not a privilege. It's not something that we automatically do or that everybody knows how to do. It is a stereotype. It is a prejudgment. And it, you know what? Okay. And this one right here, the next one, the ability to lose, use slang words. If you want to say the N-word, just say that in the article, Julie. Just say, I want to use that word. Because if you look, let me, okay, let me read. Let me read before I get, like, I get more and more irritated. And I'm getting pressure going up as I'm reading this. I might have a hot flash in a minute because it's going. So, the ability to use slang words. I'm going to read what Julie said. Certain phrases are taboo in most circles. And rightly so. Certain epithets were fought against for over a century to remove bias and labels. But some of those same phrases are being openly talked about in public and in African American culture. It makes it confusing to know what is derogatory and why. Most importantly, when someone of color uses the taboo phrase, it is no longer so. So, because you can't say the him, because that's the only word y'all use everything if you look on these social media things these platforms if y'all don't see almost every person in there trying to act like what they think a black woman acts like if you ain't got that girls and that is and that, that and mm, period and and those uh, and the clapping y'all don't look around and see everybody doing that what slang words? The only word y'all can't use is the N word. So what slang words you talking about, Julie? What you talking about, Julie? I'm I'm curious. I'm just asking the question. Our ability to use slang words. Yes, we use slang words better than y'all. Anybody. And then we had to keep making them up because once you figure out what they are, you start using them, and then we got to figure out something else. What, Julie? Okay. Using race as a moral, using race as a moral standing. Let me, let me, let me get into this. This, this one. When someone says something that is believed to be against the notion that there is systemic racism that is alive and well in the U.S., they are instantly called out as having lower moral compass for believing in something that may or may not have anything to do with race or, or, or at all. Ooh, I couldn't even get that out because I'm irritate, irritated. There is a quick jump from having an opinion to being a bad person and not caring about the black American plight. So, yeah, Julie, you, you know, say you don't care about black people, but say you don't care about, see how I did that? I did it because that's what you said we do. And, so I did it, but guess what? Everybody doesn't do that. We we can literally pick out things and see things because it's been done to us so often where we didn't say anything to now we're saying stuff to correct people in the moment. And now we're getting penalized for correcting people in the moment when something is racist, even though they were like, oh no, I'm not racist. You, But what she just said, what you just, this whole article, what you just said, and even in this paragraph, by saying whether it was racist or not, they can say it. Okay, I'm going to go to the next one. Oh, I forgot to read. Lowering standards is a privilege, y'all. Lowering standards is a privilege. The argument against inequality in education is a fair and just one. Lowering standards for African American test scores and requirements for higher education is a necessary way to allow and oppress people to get the same advantages as other communities. It is a problem, however, when two people from the same socioeconomic class are not judged on the same scale and one gets privileged over another. 
I don't think we've ever been judged on the same scale. You can say what you want to say. You you can make it seem like it is what it is, but it ain't. I don't I, I don't care. And now I'm just calling BS on everything because now I'm irritated. The more I read this article, the more irritated I get. But yeah, so I don't know if that was all 15, but it was close to the 15. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, read what she wrote about white privilege versus African-American privilege. This should be fun. The reality exists that both African-Americans and white Americans have different types of privileges that benefit their race. Now, now that's a lie. That's a lie. Okay. Because I've not read one privilege that was actually a privilege on him. Okay. Although all Americans are supposed to be equal, that only exists in a perfect world and one that is free from labeling, stereotyping, and underlying bias, which is everything that happens to African Americans. We get labeled, we get stereotyped, there are biases against us, but whatever. Life is not fair as humans. The point is to try to equalize every American's amount of opportunities so that the American dream remains alive and in contact. I mean, in intact. Look, I moved back and misread the word. What? So this whole article, and that was the end because I read uh, the part about is black privilege really a privilege? I read that at the beginning. So, um, yeah. I don't, I, I got nothing. I don't know what to say. I, I just had to share this article with people. I just needed to I just needed for y'all to know and, and see what's being put out there and if you didn't already and I'm thinking somebody might have said something which is why I couldn't find it on the MSN website any longer with the link that I copied and they realized how racist the whole entire article was because everything that was named in that article as being a privilege was something that we had to do to survive something that we had to do to be able to move forward in life which apparently is not what they want you know, you know they don't want us to move forward they don't want us to, to to be anything they don't want us to to have anything higher or more than 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 the lowest person of their class has that is the belief and I'm not saying, and you know, I got to say, I'm not saying everybody. I'm saying, right now, I'm saying Julie. Julie Smith and whoever helped her write this article. That's who I'm saying. I'm going to say that. So, if y'all want to add anybody else to the list, y'all add whoever you want to the list. I'm just saying what I know, what I've seen, and what I've read in this article. And and I may not have gotten all my points across because, like I said, some of this stuff had me speechless. And it it, it was a lot. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's all I got for today. So, um, yep, I've introduced myself. If anybody watches this, share it with a friend. I might be doing more of these or more of something here and there. Um, sponsored by my website, butterflyflow.life, because butterfly flow is life. You can get books and apparel here are one of the shirts. I am a psychologist, so I have a shirt that says Mind Specialist. And, uh, yeah, that's it. If you made it this far, thank you for watch watching. Subscribe. Check out my website. Uh, follow me. All that great stuff. So, yeah. Thank y'all for watching. And uh, see y'all on another something. Hopefully it won't be a rank like this one.